Hey guys, MSU shooter Anthony McCray was arrested for a gun crime a few years ago, and there was some debate on whether or not police had probable cause to stop him. He ultimately ended up getting probation. Now, also tonight, we are learning what McCray had with him the night of the shooting. Fox 2 has learned MSU shooter Anthony McRae was armed with not one but two firearms as well as additional magazines in his backpack. The information comes as Michigan mourns the students murdered in the mass shooting Monday and the others injured remain hospitalized. What's the word, man? You work here? Lansing PD body camera footage captured the 2019 arrest of McRae. He was charged with carrying a concealed weapon, a five-year felony that would have kept him from passing a background check to buy a firearm even if he was not sentenced to jail time. But that felony was reduced to a misdemeanor. If you're convicted of that five-year felony, uh, you are a prohibited person, meaning your name goes into the database that the feds keep called the uh, NICS, National Instant Criminal Background Check System. And when you go to buy a gun at a dealer, you would be denied. Even so, Steve Doolin, a lawyer and board member of the Michigan Coalition of Responsible Gun Owners, says McRae likely would have been able to get a gun illegally on the streets. The frequency that mass shootings happen in our country uh, outpaces every other country in the world. Democrats in Lansing plan to introduce at least three gun control bills that they believe will help keep the public safe including red flag laws, background checks for private firearm sales, and safe storage laws that would require gun owners to keep their firearms unloaded and locked in a safe. We've renewed this call time and time again uh, and have been told by the previous majority that it's not the time uh, to talk about these, these measures that would reduce gun violence. Only people who are affected by these laws are the law-abiding person who's n not going to be a threat anyway. You're not going to stop someone who's truly intent on committing crime. Places where victims can't shoot back are magnets for these people who want to do this kind of uh, terrible crime. I sincerely sympathize with the students, staff, faculty, and all the families that were impacted by this horrific tragedy. Chad King, Midwestern Regional Director of the National African American Gun Association and founder of the Black Bottom Gun Club, says lawmakers have an opportunity to address the root causes. Of violence. If we're not dealing with the ecological issues on a, in a holistic sense and dealing with those root causes at a holistic level, then we're going to continue to see the expressions of violence, whether it's with a gun, whether it's with a vehicle, whether it's with, with a knife or any other type of mode of attack. The House and Senate Democrats were already planning to introduce gun legislation, but as you can imagine, Monday's uh, shootings are prompting them to do so sooner than expected. Reporting live, I'm Randy Wembley, and this is The Edge.